This chapter will cover saliency maps and how to ensure that models are right for the right reasons. To illustrate this issue, let's look at a toy example. Here, the task is to predict if there are two plus signs or not in the image. These could appear anywhere in the image. However, there is a confounding distractor feature in the lower left or right hand corner which is always this in the same place for that class. When a model is trained on this data, it will look at the distractor instead of counting the plus signs because it is easier. When the model is evaluated on the validation data, it will ignore the plus signs and focus on the distractor, causing it to make an erroneous prediction. Because in the validation data, the distractor is reversed from the training data. We can approximate what a model was looking at to make a prediction using a simple saliency map, which is the gradient of each pixel with respect to the output of the network. With this, we observe what would happen to the output if we changed a pixel value higher or lower. Looking at the absolute value of the gradient will allow us to see zero as blue and a positive or negative gradient as a bright color. There are many fancy saliency map approaches but at the core, they are just using this gradient. Here we see that the model is in fact looking at the distractor to make these predictions. We can see these distractors in medical data as well. For example, when we merge data sets from different hospitals, as the hospital will become a confounder that could yield visible artifacts in the images. Labels can also confound with each other. Imagine two correlated diseases and one is much easier to detect. Patient demographics can also be a source such as sex or age specific artifacts like pacemakers. We can see some of these potential confounders by looking at the average x-rays between two hospitals. On the top row we see the difference between chest x-rays from two hospitals, the NIH dataset from Maryland and the PADGES dataset from Spain. On the bottom row we see the difference between two different projections from the same hospital. Either of these could become a confounder in our model if they are correlated with a label we would like to predict. Here, a model is trained to predict emphysema, but we intentionally correlated the hospital with the target label, so almost all patients with the disease come from one of the hospitals. We can see some telltale symptoms of overfitting here. Going clockwise from the upper left, we can see the text on the image can change the output of the model. This is not a good sign. We can see the net cutoff is also predictive, which could be an artifact of the sensor location on the machine or the software used. In the lower right, we can see that the side of the person could change the prediction. We can see this as well in the difference between the average images, that in the lower right hand corner, it is very different between the hospitals. In the lower left lung, we can also see there are pixels which can have an impact on the prediction. And again, we see a large difference in the difference between the average images. There is some, but not enough work in this area to address these problems. The first category of mitigation approaches that we will talk about is feature engineering where we try to erase the confounding signal from the data. The most common method to address this is range normalization, which can work well or do nothing at all. Subspace alignment is where you take a PCA of the data in each class of the confounding variable, align their eigenbases, and then transform samples from one class to another. Another approach is removing the largest principal component. This is common in bioinformatics to address batch effects. Here you compute a PCA jointly on all data and then project and reconstruct without the largest principal component. Here the assumption is that the largest linear factor of variation is the confounding signal. The second type of approach is to regularize the training so that the models are invariant to the confounding variable. The reverse gradient method uses a discriminator to make the distribution of activations between the values of the confounding variable to be indistinguishable. The goal here is to erase the information of that variable from the latent representation of the network. But note with this approach, 
that training kids is an art and can be very difficult. The right for the right reasons approach regularizes the saliency map for each sample so that it does not focus on a known distracting region of the image. This approach requires a weak segmentation of the distracting object. The grad mask approach is similar but regularizes the saliency map which is a contrast between classes. And finally, the active diff approach regularizes the feature activations with and without a distractive feature masked out to make the model invariant. There are many open research problems in this area, and this problem is very important to solve.